Good afternoon and welcome to the Midday News. Before we start, we do apologize for the late start. Here's what we have in the bulletin. Major operation underway at the People's Arcade in Montego Bay, St. James. Trade unionists say not all public sector workers will be affected by changes to the NHT's interest rate policy subsidies. And later in sports, Reggae Boys friendly match cancelled. I'm Kalisha Williams and here are the details. A multi-agency operation is being carried out in the People's Arcade in Montego Bay, St. James after several reports of illegal activities at the facility. Cordian Barrett has the details. It's being called Operation Restore Paradise, a public order reset. For years, the operations inside the People's Arcade has been deteriorating. A vendor who has been operating in the space for over 20 years explained the challenges. First of all, we need water because people have their restaurant and they have to use water. We need water too. The dressmakers need water. The hairdressers, all of us need water. When the bathroom were there, we used to take water from the bathroom, clean up our shops. Now there is no water. It's an issue that the St. James police say they will be addressing. We are aware that meals are being prepared here for sale to the public and there is no running water and, uh, I mean, electricity, electricity is there, but um, it's basically stolen electricity. So it's a situation where if we are to really um, seek to maintain law and order, we must pay some attention to the activities that are taking place here. We but the arcade, which is intended for business operations, has recently turned into a living facility for some. The police say they are not in support of poor living conditions, especially where children reside. Therefore, the Child Development Agency will be contacted. They will be coming here um, to look and see the situation and to ensure that our children are grown up in a safe environment. This is not a safe and ideal environment, so they will be coming. Um, it's not something that we can see and leave alone. So that is a priority for us going forward. But it's more than just a lack of resources. We did some snap raids within the space looking for persons who may be um, wanted or persons of interest in crimes that have been committed within the division. Uh, this area is a hotbed for crime. We've had several situations within this same grounds and in close proximity where this area is used as escape routes for criminals. The St. James Police have brought in additional agencies to assist in reviewing the situation inside the arcade. We have the Ministry of Health and the Water Commission here with us and the Municipal Corporation looking at how we can work together to ensure that we can get this place to a level where it is safe um, for for the public to utilize. Cody and Barrett for TVJ News. The Jamaica Confederation of Trade Unions, JCTU, says the majority of public sector workers will not be affected by the National Housing Trust, NHT's new policy on interest rate subsidies. The NHT said income will now be the sole determinant of interest rate subsidies on loans as other factors are now eliminated. The policy change was first announced in March by Prime Minister Andrew Holness. President of the JCTU, Helene Davis-White, says over 50 percent of public sector workers workers earn below $30,000 per week, which attracts a 0% interest rate on mortgages. However, Mrs. Davis White, Davis White told TVJ News that the issue will be re-examined in the context of the Public Sector Compensation Review to determine if more workers will be affected. I think what we still have to be doing as, as, as representatives of public sector workers is to look at the kind of impact that this will have, whether it will have any real substantial change to um, what it is that public sector workers have been enjoying um, in terms of subsidies on, on mortgage rates. And um, we will have to um, take a final position based on that information. But just on the face of it, um, looking at $30,000 per week, I think that covers a vast number of, of, of um, public sector workers as we see. The NHT says those contributors who earn above $30,000 and below $42,000 
per week will pay 2%, while those who earn over $42,000 per week will pay 4%. In addition, the trust has doubled its special grant for persons with disabilities to $300,000, as well as doubled the number of persons who can apply for the grant per household. However, these persons must be registered with the Jamaica Council for Persons with Disabilities. President of the Jamaica Association of French Teachers, Anil Madden, is this afternoon weighing in on the teacher migration issue. Speaking on the morning agenda on Power 106, Mr. Madden said a number of educators have tendered their resignation, leaving a high school in the corporate area to scamper for their replacements. Just this earlier this week, earlier this week, um, three teachers resigned from one department um, at a high school. And that's the largest school in um, Kingston and St. Andrew. So we have a challenge in place in our teachers. The University of the West Indies and Shortwood Teachers College are the only tertiary institutions that train educators to teach French. According to Mr. Madden, there's no guarantee that French teachers will hit a demanding education system come September. When the students leave university, France has a teaching program. A lot of them go to France and some of them, well, most of them do a dual degree in terms of Spanish French. So the French majors may end up going to France to work as a language, a, a language assistant mm -hmm. and the Spanish ones may go to Spain or Colombia or elsewhere. And so if from the cohort, we just have a few who remain and then there are teachers who are leaving annually, it's going to be hard to replace as the country seeks to boost the number of tourists to the island by air, significant upgrades are being made to at least one of the island's international airports. That airport is the Sangsta International Airport in Montego Bay, St. James. It's understood that the operators of the airport are hoping to top the 2019 levels of arrivals of over 4 million visitors. But with that comes its own challenges, that of congestion. However, Transport Minister Audley Shaw, following a tour of the facility on Thursday, said the congestion at the airport could soon be a thing of the past. The Airports Authority of Jamaica will collaborate with uh, PICA and the MBJ, Montego Bay Airport, to procure and install 15 additional immigration kiosks, moving the total from 45, which exists now, to 60 kiosks. Now, these kiosks will also be able to process the C-5 immigration forms. Mr. Shaw says additional kiosks will hopefully be in place by the latest year end. Next week, by next week, so that they are, they'll be supplied by December of this year. And the AAJ, of course, has consented to the order and will identify the necessary funding for, for this. Continuing the news, an unidentified man who attempted to rob a bar in Nashville, Mandeville, Manchester, was shot dead by a licensed firearm holder last night. A Beretta 9mm pistol containing a magazine with nine cartridges was seized from him. It's reported that about 11.25, the man entered the bar on the plaza and ordered a drink. He then pulled a firearm and ordered patrons and the bartenders to hand over their cellular phones and money. The man was challenged by a licensed firearm holder who shot him several times. The robber ran from the bar and collapsed outside while clutching his firearm. The police were called and transported the man to hospital where he was pronounced dead. Barita Investments is expected to boost business in St. Mary following the purchase of the 250 acres of reggae beach in the parish. And according to one member of parliament, the company is bringing a suite of facilities which will create opportunities for a job in the parish. Jamila Maitland reports. St. Mary's open for business. That declaration from member of parliament Robert Montague following Barita Investments' purchase of reggae beach in the parish. According to Mr. Montague, a hotel, 
housing development and the police station are among several facilities to be built. They're going to move the road south and carry it almost up to where country club is so that the land between there and the seaside will now become seaside land. And they're going to build 2,000 hotel rooms. And then behind country club, they're going to build 200 NHT type houses. They're going to build a new police station, a new clinic. Hundreds of jobs are expected to be created because of it. This, the MP says, will increase the parish's prospects for even more investment. So St. Mary is open for business. And the more investment and business we get is the more opportunities you will have. Question is, who will make use of the opportunities that are being created? He was speaking at an event to award tertiary students in his constituency with grants for furthering their education. Among the audience was MP for East Central St. Catherine, Alando Terlong, who encouraged the students to be resilient as they brace for the upcoming semester. Growing up in Transpen in a one-bedroom board house, I often thought, wow, this could not be it. I know that with an education, life can be much better. And I had a mother who instilled in me that very same concept, that if you are good, your nose have to run. As you complete your tertiary studies, make sure, I know some of you are going to teach us college, some of you are going to UE, UTEC, some of you are going to different colleges, etc. But never forget where you got your start, right here in Western St. Mary. Jamila Maitland, TVJ News. And we now go to Cody and Barrett with the Business Minute. In financial news, investment and real estate company Proven Group Limited made more profit in its first quarter ended June. Post-tax earnings for the company amounted to 2.19 million US dollars compared to 1.71 million US dollars earned last year. Proven's total income was 15.15 million US dollars versus 6.5 million US dollars at the end of June 2021. The company says its results improved mainly due to growth in net revenues. Total funds under management by non-deposit taken financial institutions were estimated at $1.93 trillion in 2021. According to the Economic and Social Survey, the figure increased by 6.7% compared with the end of 2020. Total assets held by these groups amounted to $1.19 trillion, reflecting a 9.3% increase. Securities firms accounted for 70% of funds under management from non-deposit taking institutions and we're bringing Russian cuisine to Jamaican taste buds with the crepe house it's the focus of the business review this Sunday during primetime news that's it for the business minute this week I'm Cody Ann Barrett it's time now for our regional and international stories in the region, the World Bank Group, WBG, says it has deployed 20.7 billion U.S. dollars during its just-completed fiscal year in June to support Latin America and the Caribbean LAC as the region continues to deal with the negative impacts of the coronavirus COVID-19 pandemic. The WBG said this brings its support to LAC since April 1, 2020 to an unprecedented total of 49.8 billion U.S. dollars to fight the health, economic and social impacts of COVID-19 as well as support the region's response to the overlapping challenges of the sharp economic slowdown, rising inflation and deepening food insecurity due to the war in Europe. On the international scene, a study found the risk of a medley of symptoms called long COVID remains elevated two years after recovering from the initial infection. Researchers analyzed two years of hospital data for adults and kids from an electronic health records network. They found adult risk of developing seizure disorders, brain fog, dementia and other mental health conditions remains high two years after recovering from COVID. And kids had an increased risk of being diagnosed with epilepsy or seizures, encephalitis and nerve root disorders. And those were your top regional and international stories. And that's the news.
at 7 for Primetime News. On behalf of the news, sports and production teams, good afternoon.